Let's see, uh, national team? Am yeah. I missing anything else? Okay, yeah, won a couple trophies. All right, he's doing you know, all right. You probably heard his name before. If you are, uh, if you play for the Red Bull, if you're a fan of Red Bull, you really hate hearing this name uh, <laughs> because he just played against you guys. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only pullover and stop driving and put your hands together for the one, the only, Paul Ariola of DC United, everybody. How's it going, guys? What's we up, are, buddy? We're great. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's uh, it's it's an honor to have you on the show. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, first question we have to ask. I mean, you you had uh, you were dealing with injury uh, for a while, and you just uh, got uh, you know uh, some minutes uh, just the other day. Uh, how are you feeling? How is it? How does it feel to be back? Yeah, it feels great to be back. Um, yeah, so far it's been a it's been an up and down type year as far as injuries. Um, so, you know, anytime I now I can get back on the field, it's like, oh, it's like a kid, you're like a kid again. You know, you're so excited. Um, and, you know, at this point, I'm just trying to stay healthy and, and try and gain some form, uh, you know, to, to finish the season, the season strong. You just played um, against the New York Rebels. You know, you're getting some minutes in. Do you have, I don't, I, you know, speaking of injuries, I'm injured all the time, but never for anything <laughs> athletic. You know what I mean? <laughs> My doctor's like, how'd you hurt your knee? I'm like, that's a good question. I thought you would be able to figure it out. I woke up and it's tw twice the size and I can't bend it. You know why you hurt yourself. But when you come back, is it a little different? Like when I go get Doritos from the cupboard, sometimes I pause and I was like, well, I don't want to re-injure myself. Let me go slow. <laughs> do you do the same thing on the pitch? Or are you at this point, once you're ready to go on the pitch, you're ready to go because you've done all the stuff you needed to do in training. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when, when you get on, when I get onto the field, it's like, if I can't, if I can't give, you know, at least 90% of what I usually give, if I feel I can't help the team, like I'm not going to step on the field, you know, and I think that's the, you know, and obviously there's, there's times to play injured and play through things. Uh, but, you know, finishing the summer when the weather's still blazing hot random on random days, you know, like those are the days that you, you don't want to do that. Um, so <laughs> yeah. lately, yeah, like, you know, luckily we had the international break. I missed, uh, unfortunately I missed the international break with the national team, but, uh, it, it gave me a couple extra weeks to really get back to uh, to full health and uh, get ready to roll. Yeah, and and like, can we let's talk about uh, the national team. Uh, these these last couple of weeks have been uh, pretty wild. I mean, obviously, very important matches uh, needed those points. Uh, as, as someone who, who you know just won uh, won the gold cup and then you know and then missing these games. Uh, uh, what is, what is it, ah! what's that feeling like watching uh, when you really, really obviously want to be there? Yeah. For, first of all, it's a, it's a huge blow, right? It, it's a huge blow to feel like, um, you know, you should be there and you should be able to, to help your team in, in what, what, whatever way it is. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it's tough, but at the same time, like just like everyone else, I'm, I'm, I'm the national team's, uh, you know, biggest fan and I support all the guys. Obviously I know, I know all those guys very, very uh, closely, and, and and I know how hard it is to be playing in these qualifying games, uh, based on my experience in the past. So, um, you know, it, it it wasn't it was difficult because I wasn't able to physically be there, uh, but at the same time, um, you know, I, I watched on social media everyone just freak out about what was going on and and the way the games were going. But from the inside, and and as as a player, a part of that group. Uh, I, th I think we we all know what to expect and you know in, in qualifying sometimes there's going to be highs sometimes there's going to be lows um, you know and if we consider this a, a low situation for us uh, and we can only get better from here then I think we're in great shape obviously leaving um, you know the the three games with five points uh, you know isn't isn't amazing but it's definitely not it's definitely not uh, you know the the worst thing that could happen to us right. let me ask you this because as fans of the men's national team which we both are we, it's I a assume, I assume Paul is, is as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I mean, he plays on the so. team. So yeah, yeah. You're a fan, but sure. I can't say I also play every once in a while. So we're fans. You're a player. I just, look, I, I just want to mention real quick. I'm just glad the players on the field are seeing ah. social media freak out. Okay. You're seeing me That's the question and, and, and what I'm I going through <laughs> because we're in a, we're in, a, you know, we're yanking the wheel each way, depending on how you guys play every 10 minutes. It's either we're the worst, we're in the worst situation possible, or we're going to be fine. We went from beating Mexico twice in finals to then, you know, drawing the first two matches. And it looks like of, of the world cup qualifying. And it felt to us like the world was crumbling around us. How much of that jarring left to right 
you know, worst to the best to everything's going to be okay to, oh my God, we're never going to get out of this. How much of that is felt by the players? And don't give me the media speak answer. Be <laughs> honest. Like, do you guys find a way to keep that out of your brains and just focus on the competition? Or do you feel that from us as well? Because we're all like, it's like we're in an unhealthy relationship with this team. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think first, first of all, I think this uh, world cup qualifying cycle and, and you know, since, 2019 really there's been a lot more fan engagement right and a lot a lot more i feel people that are watching uh u.s soccer very closely um especially as as the sport in the u.s grows you know quickly you know every year um and the only thing i could say to that is welcome to Concacaf. you know this is this is <laughs> this is this is what it is and and not only that but the competition you know every every team uh, in, in, in qualifying they're they're good teams, right? They all have their strengths. They all have their weaknesses, uh, just like we do. And, um, you know, people, people, you know, just expect us to walk over every team. And in reality, you know, it's, it's not like that, uh, in, in today's soccer world and in CONCACAF and what it's like to play, you know, El Salvador away or Honduras away. Uh, you know, those are the games that, that that they feel that these teams feel like it's it's their life right it's it's their opportunity to show you know the u.s right and and all the people who are watching um and maybe all the coaches who are watching this is their opportunity to to demonstrate you know who they are and why they should be um you know why some of them maybe should be playing the mls or get better opportunities um elsewhere um i I, I, I was just gonna ask I, i wonder what's the what's the CONCACAF especially when it comes to qualifying these big matches what's the trash talk like exactly because you I imagine it's on a different level than pretty much anywhere else in the world just just that's my impression because I I saw comments from I think it was Tyler Adams had mentioned he was talking about Kellen Acosta and what he was doing and seeing, especially during Gold Cup, to try to get, you know, a, a, a Qatar, all the trash talk trying to tell me you, why you should retire. And then he ended up missing the penalty and all this other stuff. What's it like? What's the di- dynamic in CONCACAF, especially with some players who, who don't speak Spanish and there are, are like, what, what's, you know, what, what is that like? Yeah, honestly, it's just, it's just a lot of, it's just a lot of F bombs, you know, like. <laughs> There's not really, you know, like, I think, I think Kellen Acosta, he's a chirper, man. He, he'll get into, he'll get into anyone's face for any, for any reason to stir it up. I thought I was bad at one point, but Kellen, Kellen loves to get in there and, and, and get the energy going. Um, That's like when my mom gets like cut off, she just yells anything with, with the F word in it. You know what I mean? She doesn't speak English that well. So she's like, no, do it. You know? <laughs> like, I don't think that made sense, but I feel like the emotion got across. Ma. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, yeah. The only, the only person that I, and I, and I really didn't even say much to him. Uh, Cause he knows, but Andy Nahar who plays on Honduras also plays on my, on my club or right, on, right. on, you know, DC United. Uh, and when he came back, I just asked him, Hey, what happened, my man? <laughs> and, you know, he just kind of like puts his head in the shower, puts some shampoo on, you know, like, I don't know what happened. We, you know, we, we seem like we had it going on, but obviously something changed. Um, yeah. He balled that game though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. He was, he was embarrassing. Uh, some, uh, some, I was saying you ain't doing that at DC. You ain't <laughs> doing that at DC. <laughs> oh, damn, bro. <laughs> you hold it out. <laughs> What's up? I'm Renee Montgomery. I just kicked it with the Cooligans after the Hawks kicked the Knicks out the playoffs, baby. Ooh, ooh. Knicks and eight. <laughs> Knicks and eight. Coming from a, a, a player who's played on the national team for a while as a captain, um, you know, the, obviously there was a lot of controversy with a, a player being being sent home. Uh, you know, a, as a captain of a team and a national team, what what do you think your responsibility is to kind of talk to other players when it comes to uh, kind of things like that? Maybe off the field uh, concerns or issues like w- w- what responsibility does the captain of a team uh, have in, in kind of that situation in, in ca- sort of gathering all the truth? Yeah, I think every team and every person and every leader is different, uh, you know, and 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 it, it really just it, it's it's really all based on who you're with, um, you know, like 
with the national team, obviously there there's, especially in today's world, there's, there's specific rules, um, you know, that, that, that they go over to make sure, I mean, even with the club team, um, you know, there's always rules that, that you clearly know, uh, you know, what's right and what's wrong. Um, and I think in that, in that instance, I think Weston just, just made a mistake and, and that's it. But, uh, everyone knows the type of, uh, person and player and personality and leader that he is, um, you know, and no problem. I mean, you know, and, and I think everyone knows that everyone, everyone can make mistakes. Sometimes you have to, uh, you know, pay, pay for them. Sometimes you can get away with them a little bit. Um, but, but yeah, you just kind of, you just kind of move on. Right. And, and at the end of the day, we're all, we're all adults. Well, most of us, <laughs> uh, most of us are, <laughs> most of us are adults. Um, and so, you know, so you, you for the most part, you kind of know, uh, right or wrong and, and yeah, it just kind of depends. I mean, you know, me personally, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really say anything. Um, you know, and, and my perspective is, you know, if you show, you know, you show up when the whistle, when the whistle blows, uh, until the whistle, um, you know, finishes the game, uh, you do your job and, and let's move on from there. Do you yeah. ever feel as when you, beca- especially, you know, your position on some of these national team selections, you end up becoming the veteran, the elder statesman sometimes, you know, a uh, bit of a leader. You mentioned some of us are adults. Sometimes, you know, Greg Berhalter, I'm like, where's he finding these kids? High school? You know I mean? it's, like, it's, it's you, Sebastian Legend, and a bunch of kids whose moms are driving him to the game. You know what I mean? So what do you feel? What do you feel is your responsibility as a captain? Just because I don't know, I've never been the captain of a team before. For some reason, I've never been picked for a team. You're like, buddy, go get his Gatorades. When you get picked as the captain, do you have those responsibilities off the field or as a captain, you're like, nah, that's not my place to say anything that's coach. No, you know what? Um, you know, I think, I think a lot of us, like I said, there's leaders on the field, there's leaders off the field. There's people that naturally lead by voice, lead by example. Um, and me personally, I'm more of a lead by example. Um, you know, I mean, that's just, that's just who I am. Yeah. I, I can, I can get up and, 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 you know, say a speech and get the guys going. Um, but, but overall, I mean, it's just, uh, it, it, for me, the most important thing is that you, you show what you're about on the field, right? You, yeah. you lead the right way. Um, you, you show your team, um, you know, in certain, in certain situations, you're, you know, you're the guy that's fighting. You're the guy that's really getting into it. Other times you're, you know, you're the guy that that's, you know, going with a bunch of energy, talking to the referee, different things like that. But, um, you know, on the national team, it's a special thing to, to, to be able to captain the team. And, and obviously Greg has, has passed around the, the, the armband, um, a few time, a few times, which, um, you know, I have no problem with that. I think, I think it's great to be able to give the confidence to, to different guys, because I mean, you know, whenever you get the captain's band for club or country, um, you know, it's unreal, right. It, it gives you this, this, uh, this confidence booster, uh, to, to help you go out there and, and, and again, remind you that you're not just playing for yourself. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're leading your team, you're leading your country, you, you, you might be leading your club. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's just awesome. Yeah. Dude, yeah I'd let it, it go right to my head. I'd be like ankle socks. We playing in ankle socks. Everybody <laughs> cut, your, cut your socks. <laughs> but that's, that's, it's an I interesting dynamic right. because obviously <laughs> the pressure is obviously there in it, pretty much any, any match when it comes to the national team. But then there's also the expectation of seeing where all of our players are playing all over the world. And it's just like everybody's ego everybody's like yo this is our time and one thing i do love and even though it's it's unfortunate even the the situation with weston on a on a public on a level just the you know people that they're talking about him in italy like what is like even is is he a diva i'm like they're talking about american players like i'm like this is great we made it (laughs) we made made it (laughs) we on tmz in italy let's go (laughs) we're doing it okay uh so um uh, paul uh, i want to talk about dc united uh, a little bit and and just uh you know it it was a a, a kind of a a rough start to the year but it looks like the the team is really kind of rallying together can you talk a little bit about your obviously your new coach and now knows how that and and just uh, the kind of the the, the vision he's brought uh, to the club and how uh, how it's affecting the team. Yeah, Hernan is a uh, he, he's a great co- he's a great coach, um, you know, to us and for us. And um, you know, he's coming with a philosophy which I think all of us have you know knew that that at some point for for our club to 
to get back to to you know the the golden days and 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 being successful is you know in today's world for for the most part uh you know you you need to be able to have a system especially when you're not going to fill your team with you know 20 superstars um and so you know he's been able to kind of transform us into this uh pressing team uh you know a different dynamic um type team in the MLS which is exciting for us um you know obviously i think there's one there one there there's a lot to improve on still um from a club perspective on the field off the field perspective um and and i think we're we're slowly getting there collectively which is important and two you know this year i think at the start of the year every everyone you know kind of said well there's no expectations um you know no one really expects us to to do much you know especially based on last year especially based on the years after you know we lost Rooney we lost Lucho Costa uh we brought in some guys last year uh you know in, in our covid year that that you know we we just didn't really perform well um and so this year with a new coach everyone kind of dropped the ball on us and said well you know we'll see where they finish and you know if they do well they do well uh for us that's great you know the the less pressure um sure you know the less pressure at times is is better for for a for a team collectively and that's kind of where we're at at the moment right like you know uh, we we went over the 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 review of of the odds to win MLS cup right and we're not we're not we're not on you know i think it's like the top 10 or top 12 teams uh you know for us that's i mean that that's fine you know what yeah, what's, yeah. what's the problem with being an underdog what's the problem with going into going into games uh where no one's really expecting you to stay in the playoffs and if you win it's a plus and if not well then no one expected it so for us it's kind of been a it's kind of been an interesting mentality in that way uh we obviously go into games thinking we're going to win every game right we press and we think we're going to we press so hard at times we think we're going to you know pick the ball off four times and score you know and we end up, and then we end up maybe winning the game 1-0 off a penalty kick you know like it's it, yeah. it's just you know it's just so crazy and um you know we've had we've had Ola Kamara uh who's who's scoring a lot of goals for us this year who's uh, obviously when you're scoring you know 13 goals and and you know you're going to score more uh you know hopefully your team is is going to be somewhat successful if you got a guy like that um and, and then some of us are 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 showing up in 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 certain games and and making differences in those which are which is also important so for us yeah it's it's been great like i said i think there's still there's still a ways to go for us um but overall uh, we you know we're just going man we're just playing every game uh obviously we've had a lot of injuries so it's kind of next man next man mentality at the moment yeah um but you know i, I hope at some point we'll get everyone healthy uh and we'll all be able to uh step on the field and have a full roster right and right. i know i i saw and not recently got past his driving test some of that it was a very excited about it, <laughs> it was even, very adorable how happy that. he was <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, gets, he gets to save on Ubers. But... Maybe, maybe he'll stop. Maybe he'll stop riding his bike to training. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it was it something like he, pa- so <laughs> he passed his like I think written test, and he was like super excited. He's like, I, I can drive, and it's like, no, you got to do the actual driving. Yeah, test. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> only, only with another person in the car are you allowed to drive. You, you have a, you have a, a cool story. When you got to DC United, you were like the big signing. I think you your first match was RFK's last game, right? No, it was it was that year. It was that year. Um, okay, okay, okay. My first your game, first goal. Your first goal was my, that. My, I think. Your first yeah, goal was my that first thing. goal yeah. was the last one. Yeah, my my first game. It was actually a looking back on it and being a part of DC United and RFK days and all that. Like my first game back was or my first game with DC. I had gotten in like on a on a on a thursday night no on a thursday night we had a saturday game or something like that wednesday friday i don't know something like that and um we get out onto the field you know ben olsen the coach at the time is like yeah you know i'm you know you're fit we're gonna start you we need you all right cool so i get out onto the field we're playing against salt lake um we get going and it's okay you know like nothing nothing special it's like the 16th minute and uh light you know there's lightning or thunder in the area so we got to postpone the game we get inside and all of a sudden it just starts raining like out of nowhere so they're like all right we're going to postpone the game we're going to postpone the game but 40 minutes later it's we're still postponed and they're like okay well in about 20 minutes we're gonna try and go back out there and play and someone's like dude look at the tunnel to get out there <laughs> and like you walk out of the locker room and 
the, it's literally just filled with water all the way up. Yeah. You're like, dude, like, does anyone have a, like a, a raft or anything to get us out there? Because <laughs> there's no way, there's no other way that you're going to get out to the field with this, with this water in here, you know? So, uh, everyone was just like, yeah, welcome to RFK buddy. Like you're going to get yeah, yeah. out like that. Even the raccoons were swimming. Yeah. The- they're like, this is how we do it. The breaststroke. <laughs> <They're- laughs> this is nice. <laughs> they were the ones supplying the rafts. They had it on the back. <laughs> We have our own supporters group called uh, Gully Squad. They're our supporters. And they asked about, like, do you have any Rooney stories? And I also just want to talk about, like, when you get there, you're the big signing. And then all of a sudden, this Rooney guy shows up. You know, (laughs) what was that moment like? As a player, are you happy when those moments happen? Or are you like, man, I was top billing? Like, that's like when we are comedians, we get bumped by a bigger comic. We're like, oh, now you're excited Chappelle's here? You know, before you were excited, I was here. (laughs) No, for for me, um, it was great. It was great, actually. Yeah, I mean. One, one, uh, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm never, I'm never a guy to take, to take, you know, the glam and, and, and all of that stuff. Right. I'm, I'm more than happy. Um, you know, and I'm a pretty humble guy to, you know, to kind of just be there to, to help the team do my job, uh, in whatever way that is. If I end up as a superstar because I, I excel, then, then great. If, if, you know, I have to do the dirty work, I got to do it. So, um, you know, when Wayne, when Wayne goes to, when we hear Wayne potentially is going to be on the team, right? Like, again, we're, we're in the RFK days and we're like, dude, that guy's going to be in here. Like with us, <laughs> you know, like with the raccoons, there's no way this guy's going to come in here. And like, and sure enough, he, he freaking walks in, you know, he, he lands in, in, uh, he lands I think he landed in Dulles, he, or in the yeah. airport. And then he, he goes and does like this, like, I, don't, I think it was like a small tour or something like that, like set up like for him to walk around. I don't know where. And you're watching videos and this guy's like, he's just packed with like everyone, you know, everyone's out to see this guy. And it's like, oh my God, like Rooney has arrived. Right. And he gets into the locker room and uh, he's just so humble, dude. It's unreal. Like he's, uh, and I always say that he, he's unreal. Like as, as amazing as he was as a player, as a person, as a teammate, uh, he was great. He was just one of the guys really like, I mean, we'll, you know, we'd play cards, we'd, you know, hang out. Uh, he, he loved to like get into the, get in, once we got to the hotel, he loved to like just take off his clothes and get in a robe and his, and his like hotel slippers, <laughs> you know? And it's like, and it's like, we're going to like his room to play cards and here he is opening You're the like, door. You're like, we're in the like, lobby, this- Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you get in the room, buddy. <laughs> yeah, nah, he, Too comfy. he was unreal. He was, he was amazing. And then obviously when he did the things on the field, um, you know, it's just like, this is, this is, this is incredible. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. So that, awesome. Thank you. Uh, that was at MJ Lee. Thank you for uh, for the question. I I just one quick thing that I just want. Uh, this is from a DC United supporter, Val Paschal. She asked this question. She said, like, "What's the most inspirational thing you've heard coming from Bill Hamid, uh, or is someone else the inspirational dude in the locker room?" Oh, that's a good. That's a good question. Because I imagine uh, if it came from Bill, it's probably loud as well. The inspiration. If it's yeah. coming, if it's coming from uh, Bill, yeah, it's definitely loud. It's probably a lot of banging, and something's probably broken. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'd probably say, I, I mean, there's a lot of guys. Like, there's a lot of guys that are chirping. You know, like we're just all little little birds just chirping, dude, in the locker room. Like, yeah, yeah, let's go. You know, everyone's getting hyped up. Um, usually, it's Hernan or Fred. Steve, myself, um, sorry, Fred Briant, Steve Birnbaum, yeah, yeah. myself. Um, yeah, I, you, you know, it's just a lot of guys, right? It's, it's, it, it's, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, hard middle-class workers in that, in that locker room. So we're all <laughs> just trying right. to get, well, blue collar. All, that's right. We're all just trying to get each other going. <laughs> yeah. You're all punching in, punching out with your lunch boxes <laughs> and your heart. Out. And I, I, I we, you know, we've had, we've had Kevin Paredes, uh, on this show. Uh, I oh, always, w- always love giving him a shout out. Uh, uh, another Dominicano playing in major league soccer. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of uh, trash talk even there. Like, 
you know, as far as Domin- just a Dominican excelling, Greg Berhalter talking about him at, 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 to such a high degree. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of banter there as well, having a Dominican in the locker room. No, man, Kevin's American. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'll play for the, Perfect, play for the U.S., no problem. <laughs> Uh, Absolutely. Okay. As long as he picks <laughs> reggaeton on the aux cable, we don't care what team he plays for. Paul, thank you so much for joining us, man. An absolute honor uh, getting to getting to <laughs> chat with you. Uh, uh, yeah, we have uh, we have a couple pieces of business before we let you go. We have to get to our Galasso gift. This is uh, your opportunity to celebrate a goal uh, that we will turn into a gift. It will live on the internet forever. Alexis will give you a scenario. Uh, uh, so, Alexis, uh, feel free to let them know what it, what what you suggest. Oh, this is ah oh, man. There's so many things uh, that I could say. All right. So let's say uh, you're about to um, you're about to score a goal with DC United. This is MLS Cup, and for some reason you were told uh, beforehand that if you score this goal, you will go back to being the captain of the men's national team, and you just love it so much. So you <laughs> score this beautiful. It's a rebound too. It bounces off just like Landon Donovan's versus Algeria, <laughs> almost the exact same goal. You score. How do you celebrate getting that captain's armband back? Oh man! All right. Uh... You need me. You you want me to do it? Or you want me to explain what I'm doing? You can explain you need to do it. it. You could do it. You could do both. Well, whatever. If it needs any, you know, explanation, feel free to do that. But right. do, if you go have for props. It. <laughs> first of all, first of all, the scenario is like it, it's like a ten out of ten. You know, like you can't like. <laughs> I, don't, I thought you were going to say, like, I was going to win the lottery or something. This is, like, better than <laughs> winning the lottery, man. Uh, oh, it's, like, a very reasonable uh, thing. Yeah. Oh, you you know what? You'll get the captain's armband for life. For yeah. the rest <laughs> of your career, you are you will be known as the most captained U.S. men's national team player. Oh, man. Oh, shoot. Uh, all right. It goes in, tap in, boom, and then you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> and I <laughs> I love it and I also love the shirt itself said I can't believe you doubted me which is even better <laughs> that is perfect also are you you wear a knit sweatshirt with nothing underneath it you don't put a white beater on and <laughs> you something on there you go raw dog yeah you're sweating you on it dude there. honestly honestly man I just you know we get we had a game we had a game before we got a game coming up I took a nap I'm like oh god I gotta get going here I go like it's like 68 degrees in my house I'm like man I'm a little chilly even though it's like 90 degrees outside amazing I guess I guess when you have that many muscles you don't get itchy from the knit you feel me maybe that's my problem uh, or it yeah, could just this- be lack of lack of style or something I don't know <laughs> Paul, uh, amazing, man. Thank you so much uh, uh, for doing that. Is there anything you want to let people uh, know about? Anything you want to plug before we let you go? Yeah, just uh, if you guys want to follow my social media accounts. Um, most of it is at Paul Ariola. Pretty simple. Uh, my last name, uh, A-R-R-I-O-L-A, not A-R-E-O-L-A. <laughs> Too many jokes with the nipples. But... Right, sure, look at that. That's you know, right. we kept it highbrow. We didn't even make that joke today. Right. Look at that. I even though you showed us, even though you showed all. us your Paul Ariolas, it's, we we didn't make a joke about it. I'm sorry. I'm actually starting to embrace it now that I'm now that I'm getting older. You, everyone's stressing me out, giving me gray hairs. I'm just like, yeah, I'll just take, I'll take the I'll take the like all my fantasy football uh, names this year all involve nipples. So um, nice. <laughs> that's what I'm about, I guess these days. You know. Okay, cool. you know, yeah, lean into the brand, Paul. That's right. It's all that's good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see the logos. Uh, yeah. anyway. <laughs> Paul, uh, thank you again. Absolutely honored. Thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck uh, the rest of the season uh, at DC, and uh, and and hope that obviously see you back on the on the men's national team uh real real soon okay uh everybody make sure you follow us uh at soccer cooligans on all social platforms uh and make sure you follow at football sports as well and subscribe to the football sports youtube channel for more clips and full episodes of the show all right paul let us end the show the way we normally do as is tradition so please join us uh, in doing this so for paul Ariola, my name is christian polanco That's right. I am Alexis Guerreros. And together, what are we? The The Cooligans!